Hey Gemini, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for September 2018. Make sure you click in the description box down below and check out the new Stormy Grace merch in collaboration with my friends at Bad Manners. You can check them out in the description box down below as well. All right, Gemini, so this month we have got the personal planets all moving forward. They're not in retrograde. Plus we've got the big daddy planets, both Saturn and Pluto, coming out of retrograde this month. So we have a lot of forward energy, but it is definitely an energy in September that will say, hey, have you been working on the things and have you been taking advantage of looking at what we showed you during the retrograde so that you can move some things forward? Now, I will tell you this month for you, Gemini, I think has a lot of focus in not only things that have to do with the home. I think it's a very home-based kind of energy this month for you. But with Mars moving direct in forward again and moving into the sign of Aquarius, you may be dealing with things that have to do with education and the law. So there could be some legal things on the table as well. I don't want to scare anybody, so don't get freaked out. I'll tell you all about it, okay? Let's jump in and let's break this month down by date so I can get you out and enjoying it, all right? Right at the beginning of the month here on the 5th, your ruling planet Mercury is going to move into the sign of Virgo joining the sun. Now, wherever the sun is at, remember, we want light, heat, life, vitality. We're expressing ourselves, right? So, in this kind of sibling energy that it does act a little bit differently than you do, but a sibling energy, Mercury is here with the sun lighting up your fourth house. Now this tells me that first of all, Mercury is a very communicative and communicative and mental energy. So you can have a lot of things happening in your home. You're thinking about it. You know, fourth house is home, family, real estate, property, your foundational level beliefs, right? These things could be shifting for you. You could have someone coming into your house. You could have someone leaving. I mean, my goodness, with all of these planets forward, you could even have people visiting your house this month. I wouldn't be surprised about that at all. But your mind seems to be on doing things at home and in the home zone and it'll be this way until september 21st okay so you've got several weeks weeks to work with this now in the sign of virgo this is a very meticulous energy right so you could be looking at patterns you could be cleaning you could be um looking at how to make things flow better, to have a better system and a better routine in your world. So there could definitely be that. So keep that in mind. Now you've also got a new moon that's going to happen here, but I'll get there in just a second. On the 6th, we've got Saturn coming direct in the sign of Capricorn. Now for you, this is going to be happening in your 8th house, the house of joint resources, the house of intimacy, the house of fear, right? There's a lot that happens up there in that 8th house, but this is an energy that I think is really gorgeous because it actually as it comes direct Saturn is in this really nice grand trine pattern now there is a little bit of energy here that makes me feel like whatever's happening in this eighth house in the place where you're connecting with others right you're having to put in a little bit more work you're having to put in a little bit more effort and like I said I do feel like there could be some legal things on the agenda as well so you could be um, interacting with an organization and you're having to push forward with them you're having to demand something of them you're having to request something of them so wherever you jointly share resources services and things like that Saturn is now direct and remember Saturn's been maturing you it's it's been saying, hey, I need you to stand on your own two legs because we have to achieve in this area. So a good solid grounding energy there, but it doesn't mean that it's light. It could feel very heavy this month, but you do have forward motion with that grand trine, okay? Now on the ninth, we've got that new moon happening in Virgo again, lighting up that fourth house energy. And there's also going to be later in the month some energy that is, is super helpful. But on this exact same day, Venus joins um, Jupiter in... Um, Scorpio. <laughs> so this is also a day where there's just a lot of nice energy blowing around. And that new moon says that this is our, our chance to plant these seeds of intention and to start something different here. Do you have a project in your home you need to be working on? Is there someone in your home who needs to be starting a new project? Are you relating to your family zone differently, right? I've been talking a lot over these last couple months about things with your head. And this could be your thinking. This could be a physical injury. It could be any one of those things, but it may be helpful 
helping you to relate to your family zone differently. So use this new moon to help usher in what you would like to see in this zone. Maybe you would like a new house. Maybe you'd like to move. Now with Venus and Jupiter there in Scorpio, it's in your sixth house. Again, helping you regulate some kind of routine, helping you with things around work, helping you with things in your health and your in your nutrition. This is a wonderfully expansive energy. I will say with Venus and Jupiter there as well, um, if you're looking for a job or you do something freelance, this is a gorgeous energy for you. Now on the 11th, Mars goes on ahead and takes that move from Capricorn into Aquarius, now direct, beautiful moving forward energy up here in the ninth house. Now first and foremost, I teach that the ninth house is the house of faith. You have likely had to actively relook at your faith, right? Relook at how you're using that, relook at what you believe, and now you've got some forward motion. The only way to really know if you have faith is to step out there on it. So that could definitely be an energy you're dealing with. I do think that in terms of education, higher education, certifications, licensing, all of these things, you could be pushing those forward, finishing those, or jumping into them, initiating something here. Now, the other thing I think of is legal things. If you've got any connections with the law or you were thinking about starting a lawsuit or you had to find a lawyer, or you had to do something or you are involved with something that has to do with the law, this is an energy that acts as a helper to you, okay? Rocking up your ninth house, you want Mars, your warrior energy to be there and be on your side, and that's very much so what we've got. Now, on the 12th, we've got Jupiter and Pluto in a just delicious, just delicious sextile to each other. Jupiter wants to bring wisdom. Pluto wants to change things. And what it wants to change in this sextile is you, right? So you've got some beautiful opportunities here. But what I love about this combination is that it's natural. You don't have to fuss. You don't have to fight. You really don't have to push. There's some natural growth happening here. So somewhere between your sixth house and your eighth house, these two being in combination, you've got some really delicious movement that you're able to make and you're not having to fight. Now, where the fight I think does begin is really it starts on the 11th, but the pinnacle and the peak of it I think are around the 17th or the 18th of the month when Mars comes into a square with Uranus. This is an important energy to know about because Mars square Uranus is a warring energy. Okay, it's an energy of fight. It very much so is. Now, this is going to it's going to be between your 9th house and your 12th house, okay? So, what I would tell you with Mars Uranus because this is a war energy is that do not act rash. Do not be impulsive. If something comes up, because this is an energy that can definitely bring disruption to your life. It can bring conflict to your life. And your job here is to breathe in the information. Your job here is instead of um, freaking out, is to get creative, get innovative, get inventive about what you're going to do to overcome whatever challenge is presenting itself for sure. Now, I am telling you, when the ninth and the 12th house come into a square energy with each other, one of the things that I think of is that you really have to get out there, stand on faith, because you're going to take action on something you're actually afraid of. You're going to take action on maybe some kind of institution or something like that. So this can be a very big energy. I'll look forward to seeing what this exactly translates like in your life. But what I would tell you is don't take actions that you cannot handle um, paying back later. Okay? Like if it's the solid indicated action, you do what you need to do, but don't do anything beyond. Okay? Now, on the 23rd, the sun's going to move into Libra. We're going to start shining bright around children, around joy, around expression, um, conception, new things, right? Babies, um, new ideas, new businesses, things like that. On the 24th, we've got a full moon happening in Aries. Now, this is going to bring some changes to your friendship and to your social zones, okay? And it has a lot to do with your identity, Gemini, because this is an Aries energy. It's the energy of self. So the full moon says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted, okay? So we're going to definitely, definitely have a shift here. One of the things that could be happening is you could have friendships um, falling out, right? You could have friendships that are like, not working out. It's also got a nice Saturn influence to this particular moon. So you could see that there's just some levels of social interaction that are not working for you anymore that you can identify there, right? Um, I also would pay very close attention to who's running in your circle because it may be, especially having a, a connection with that eighth house, um, 
It could be an energy where someone in your circle is not being completely honest with you, right? So you want to be mindful of what's happening around you. Now, of course, in a bigger scheme of things in the 11th house, you could be finding out things about organizations, right? You could be finding out things in the social zone where you're like, I never knew this before. This sucks that it's this way. Or quite the other thing, it shows you where you can take action. But just know that your social zone is going to get lit up and there will be some movement for sure happening at this full moon. Now, on the 30th, we've got Pluto coming direct in the sign of Capricorn. So again, lighting up this eighth house space and Pluto says, hey, Gemini, the old you has to die off so that the new you can live. And it's time for us to take some action moving forward that may be very different than what you were doing before. So I love Pluto in the eighth house. It gives you an opportunity to, one, shed that skin and move into something that fits more closely to what your life needs to be aligned with right now. And two, it allows you to deepen your intimacy, right? You deepen your intimacy by being vulnerable, which is not everybody's favorite word, but you're a little bit more vulnerable because you realize you do need the help of others around you. So it's definitely going to be a month of forward motion, forward motion, forward motion. But I think, Gemini, for you, you're going to also be taking some steps this month that, um, are big kind of scary steps for you, but they're the ones that leap you forward to exactly where you need to be now, okay? All right, guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. If you need a reading, click in the description box down below or come see me at stormygrace.com. If not, thank you so much for spending some time with me this month, and I will see you next month.